is a, an office side chair built around 1930. What I'm going to demonstrate with one of these um, is the basics of working with uh, horsehair padding not stitched in and covering that with leather. Because the springing was done at a different shop, I'll be starting with the burlap foundation over the eight-way tied coil springs. My first step is to secure the burlap to this spring work by uh, stitching it down with uh, some waxed ruby Italian cord. I draw it through uh, a little over four yards through a wax ball, beeswax, and not secure much easier. I'll start by securing the string to one of these corner springs here. I've got a double layer of burlap on these. These chairs are going to take uh, hard use so they need to be a little bit stronger. I've got a five inch curved needle. I'll push back through that direction. Go around at one time. Pull this through to secure the knot. Do a double spin around this and we'll cinch this knot off here. Move on to the next step. I need to make an edge roll that serves several functions on the front of the seat. It uh, raises the height slightly. It's going to create a well for the hair to pad in a little bit deeper. And that also will extend the profile slightly out over the, the face board here. I'll start by fastening this webbing right along the stuffing rail here. Just follow the edge of the webbing with the board. Length a half inch manila rope. I'm going to roll it up in this webbing. I'm going to make it just to the point of overlapping, just a slight little bit. Then I'm going to take a 12 ounce barbed tack and drive it right along this webbing. And what it's doing is it's pinching that in tightly. As I'm driving the tack, I'm controlling where the placement comes along the edge. And I'll work this down the edge. Craftsman Handy Cut Tool my friend Dr. Carlock gave me as a shop warming gift has proved very handy. With the edge roll tacked down it's a good idea to tap all the materials into place. Get them seated in against the tack. You can control the uh, placement along this roll somewhat. Basically just uh, soften things up and them into place. I've cut off another uh, few yards of cord, knotted in back here, just a few inches in, two or three inches in back here, right about where the top of this spring is. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to hook back this direction. I'm going to pull through enough string that I can make smaller loops that will uh, pull flat around the perimeter of the seat. From where I locked in at the back rail, and to this point where I pulled up my first loop of string and uh, have my large set aside, I'll place my hand right in here like this and I'm going to scoop up my index finger. We'll pull this cord down. Just go ahead and pull it tight. I'm going to use my hand as a gauge and I'll scoop up another finger and we'll do this around the perimeter of the seat. As I approach the corner, I'm going to drop this loop here down a little closer to the edge. And again, you must uh, take note of the direction of this needle and, and your entry points. You want it to pull back against the other cord to help lock them. Here on this back rail where we started uh, the first loop, I'm just going to butt this off and let it hang for now. 
To start adding the hair, I'll pull this uh, loop back where we tied into the burlap. I'm going to leave this string laid back over the, over the top of my hand. Get the other loop out of the way. And we'll start by working this, fluffing it out. And I'm pushing it back against my hand and getting the start is the hardest part here. I'm going to build up a, a wad just about the same size as my hand. Once you get uh, oh, a substantial amount there that will pack down to the, to the level of the springs and not feel harshly packed, but just, again, nice gentle feel. I'm going to pull this cord back and we'll draw up the slack in the loop. This will give us something to work against. I'm not going to pull this real tight, just snug enough that the hair will stay right there. Where the first cord is pulled down the first loop, I'm going to get that string out of the way and work around this corner a little bit. I'm taking just a small handful of hair out of the box at a time and working it a little bit around this corner and I'm going to start to make another foundation here and level the two across this area right there. As you push the hair into place you'll need to have a regulator that you can scratch and pick this stuff loose up along the edge here. Basically what you want to do is compress things into the gutter. It's going to be deeper there. Form it against the shape of your hands and uh, pat it into place. And You'll find that you can get a nice fluffy feel to it, very consistent. You see I'm working it flat square pattern here. Working smaller pieces now. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Go into our straightaway now. With the edge of the seat all filled in, I don't really need any bridle ties there um, to hold this in place. I'm just going to start working it in, fill this square up diagonally or just however it fits. Okay, with that last little batch of hair pushed in, I'm going to take the regulator and we're going to pick around right these union areas here, shuffle them up. With an even layer of hair on the seat, I'm going to lay over a width of cotton batting. This is a full width. I'll pare away the excess. And I've cut it just big enough that we can lay it over the edge a little bit. I've cut a piece of muslin big enough to drape over these padding materials. And I've marked centers on all four sides. I'll get this pulled down. I'm going to start by stapling centers and just snugging this into place. It takes a little juggling when you get this initial start going. I'm focusing more on the weave of the material than I am actual centers. The mark will come in handy as far as lining up with the uh, the arm or wherever it falls into play. With the muslin pulled back square along the, the chair seat, again I'm going to be watching these yarns in the cloth. And I'm going to start cutting a line right in here to the center of the arm. Stop a couple inches back, snug things up, and I'll make a diagonal cut over here. Stopping considerably short, at least a quarter inch or more, because this is just again a, a preliminary positioning here. Cut back this direction again there. I'm not worried about tucking that in for now. I'll staple this here and work the other side. 
I've removed all the staples on the back rail with the exception of the center one. Now I'm going to work with this muslin and the weave and pull it back, maintaining my placement where our release catch is, is in the arm here. Snug this back to the frame here. We'll cut a 45 back toward that upright. Not the cotton and hair on this side yet. I'm going to pull this down pretty well snug to the edge roll and we'll put a shot in it right here. I'm going to remove this one in the center and we'll start evening up the padding on the outer back here. Okay, with the uh, muslin pulled tightly against the rails on both our corners here, I'm going to push this back, tuck those flaps down to get them out of the way. And any of this cotton that hangs over quite a ways, I'm going to pare this away. I want it to fluff and break over right here at this edge. Looks like I've already got it pretty well in place from when I placed it the first time. Pull the cover down and you can see I'm breaking that cotton right there at this uh, rail. What I want to do is get an even profile across here on a pretty good start right here. I can't stress enough the importance of working with the cloth and keeping the, the yarns uh, squared up. Extremely important in getting a nicely finished job. As I'm pushing the hair down I'm watching the yarns, lining them up. You can see that the cotton is breaking right at the, the stuffing rail there. Break that edge off at a little bit of a, an arc right there. Looks good. With the back profile finished, I'm going to give this an aggressive rub towards the front. With the muslin pulled snug to the front and back, I'm going to readjust this side, trim away some of the excess. Okay, I'll shoot those fairly high on the edge and we'll start uh, working hair in to even out this right along the edge of the rail here. I'm going to pull that off right there and we'll leave that as a temporary shot for an adjustment later. With the sides filled in and pulled down, I'm going to keep working on towards the front of the chair here. I'm going to snug this up a little bit more straight in line with the uh, front rail here. We'll turn this back and we'll fill in the hair where it needs a little more firming up. At this point you can see the seat's taking on a very pleasant crown. Now it's just a matter of removing the staples across the front and dressing off this edge. Padding the back is done much the same way as we did the seats, only this time as I pull these loops down, I'm going to take them all the way down against my hand. We're going to place them like that. That'll gauge the depth of our hair when we get to putting it down. Go ahead and pull this down and tie it. 
at that depth. Start on this by pulling up a small tuft of hair. Get a couple of those started in there and work off of that. From these corners here, this last corner, it gets into an uncomfortable working angle. So I'm going to go back down here and we'll start working our way back the other direction.